With me now, Peter Jennings, who has been at the White House this morning and uh, is here in Washington with me. Peter, you've been following this shuttle program like the rest of us. Uh, just a tremendous shock so shortly after liftoff. In fact, Steve, I must tell you, you heard uh, Larry speak, sir. I was actually sitting in the White House with, with a group of other correspondents waiting for the president to come in and talk to us about the State of the Union message, and Don Regan, the chief of staff, was handed a note and said to us simply, the space shuttle has exploded details to follow, at which point I fled the room, and I sympathize with Mr. Speaks at this point because he indeed is getting virtually all of his information. At this at this time, uh, this kind, for uh, quite some years, uh, three astronauts, you will recall, uh, back in 1967, were killed on uh, the la launch pad during a testing. Uh, they burned to death inside a cap liftoff. This is not only, of course, Let's watch as we see what happens. Engine throttling up, three engines now at 104 percent. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. Close fight. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, nine nautical miles. Downrange distance, seven nautical miles. This is a slow motion replay of the explosion. In looking at the slow motion replay, you could see flames break out. There you see one of the solid rocket boosters careening off to the right, still erupting a long tail of flame behind it. In the center of the fire and the smoke, you can't see any form of what was once the shuttle. The one solid rocket booster still moving off to the right. A little later, you can see the other solid rocket go to the left. We are still not clear as yet, Tom, exactly what was parachuting down here. We are not, we're not clear, but we know that a C-130 was in the area and that medical personnel were dispatched by parachute down here. We can on, uh, on where we stand in this story. The Space Shuttle Challenger, after all these delays, and there have been so many over the last few months and weeks, and with this particular Space Shuttle Challenger flight, uh, there were de the delays. It went off this morning uh, on liftoff in, in freezing cold weather in Florida, unusually cold weather. Uh, for Florida even for this time of year. As you heard uh, Bruce Hall say at the Cape, uh, even from the first moments of liftoff, the veteran observers there thought the liftoff was uh, unusually slow, was the way Bruce Hall put it. Uh, the $1.2 billion spacecraft uh, appeared to be destroyed one minute and 12 seconds uh, into the launch. This was the first in the air disaster, in, in the air disaster, in 56 U.S. man in space missions. Although there were those of you who were following the space program at the time may recall that three astronauts were killed in 1967 uh, on a launch pad explosion during the Apollo program. That was in the program that eventually took America to the moon. But uh, you will note that in 1960, on the pad while, uh, while waiting to be launched, this morning's explosion, as you saw, happened a minute and 12 seconds about into the launch. After a series of weather and technical delays, the shuttle rose spectacularly off the launch, launch pad this morning at uh, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It seemed to be climbing smoothly, uh, traveling, uh, uh, trailing behind it that great uh, blast of fire, that uh, geyser of fire, which uh, uh, suddenly it erupted into a huge fireball and the whole space shuttle apparatus uh, shot out of control. A voice at Mission Control in Houston, perhaps you heard it on the videotape, said, we are checking with recovery forces to see what can be done at this point. This is a replay of the videotape. Ah. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, 9 nautical miles. That, downrange distance, 7 nautical miles. That awful pray-it-would-never-happen scene of the space shuttle exploding in air. 
Now, on the crucial matter of ejection seats, there are none on board Space Shuttle Challenger. There was no way in practice to make seven ejection seats work on a shuttle. And in theory, it was thought that no one could survive an ejection from the shuttle. So uh, in any case, we're told that there were no ejection seats on the space shuttle. Now earlier, uh, I said to you, uh, and I want uh, to explain for clarification, that there are a, a number of safety procedures aboard the shuttle. Uh, there are a number of procedures designed uh, uh, for escape uh, from the shuttle, particularly when it's still on the launch pad. But we now know, we've uh, sought out information and have confirmed that uh, there were no ejection seats aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger. Now, the explosion was a devastating setback to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration after successfully carrying out 24 Space Shuttle missions in less than five years. There have been 56 U.S. man and space missions. That includes the whole uh, first go into space, the, the moon program, the Apollo program, and the space shuttle program. But in the uh, space shuttle program uh, itself, there have been 24 space shuttle missions in slightly less than five years, increasing difficulty with these space shuttle missions uh, in recent weeks and months. There were seven crew members aboard. That included the school teacher, Krista McAuliffe, a uh, 37-year-old New Hampshire school teacher who was selected as America's first citizen in space. Uh, that is, citizen not directly connected with the government. You recall that one senator and one member of the House of Representatives had been fired into space, uh, but never a, a, a completely unconnected, if you will, uh, civilian had attempted uh, uh, a, a, to be a space passenger before. Uh, Mission Control in Houston said debris from the shuttle fell uh, several miles out in the Atlantic Ocean. Recovery forces, as we mentioned, were speeding in that direction, and we showed uh, in the early uh, portion of our CBS News Live report a parachute coming down in the area, and we were told later that was a paramedic who was being parachuted uh, into the sea, very near Cape Canaveral, uh, to find what uh, that paramedic could uh, among the debris that was beginning to fall. Now, the other crew members aboard the uh, space shuttle, uh, besides the school teacher, Krista McAuliffe, were Commander Francis Scobie, he's 46, the pilot, uh, Michael J. Smith, who's 40, Judith Resnick, who's 36 years old, Ronald E. McNair, who's 35, and uh, Ellison S. Onizuka, who's 39, along with Gregory B. Jarvis, who is 41 years old. All of those, except school teacher McAuliffe, part of the crew, she is, uh, second from the left in this photograph. Check me if you will, Terry, on the second from the left in this photograph uh, is the school teacher, uh, McAuliffe. Uh, Mission Control uh, has confirmed that parts of the spacecraft fell at 28.64 north latitude, 80.28 degrees west longitude. That's just a few miles uh, off of Cape Canaveral. Ships and helicopters uh, are right now racing to that area. Mission Control Center in Houston said that paramedics, uh, and now they say plural, paramedics had leaped in the water. We had only seen one before. Again, to repeat for emphasis, the space shot took place in Florida, but as uh, the control of the shot, uh, as has been the case for so many years, is Mission Control in, uh, in Houston. Now, they were twisting contrails of the explosion, lingering in the clear morning sky, but Challenger apparently fell into the sea due east of the Kennedy Space Center, and that's where uh, the ships and helicopters are now uh, uh, proceeding to check out that area. Uh, tracking reported that the vehicle had exploded and impacted the water in an area uh, located just uh, east of uh, Cape Canaveral. Uh, recovery forces include uh, a C-130 aircraft, that's uh, a huge uh, transport plane, which uh, soon should be circling the area where the uh, debris, what's left of this morning's uh, space shuttle Challenger, uh, apparently has come down into the water. While this was the 25th shuttle flight and the 10th flight for this particular space shuttle, the Challenger, the disaster uh, is, and, and is, it's no good trying to call it anything but that, the disaster for NASA is the worst since the first Apollo moon capsule burned on the launch pad on, uh, that was January 27, 1967, killing the three astronauts aboard the pad. A brilliant ball of flame erupted uh, when this $1.1 billion shuttle exploded this morning. And uh, shortly after the explosion, uh, uh, President Reagan's principal spokesman, Larry Speaks, came out at the White House uh, to say uh, simply uh, and directly uh, with sadness that President Reagan was aware of what had happened and was uh, saddened and shocked by it, and that the president, along with uh, other Americans,